Hey party people, we are here with our good buddy Tim at No Shoulders Reticulated Pythons and oh, Pig and Supplier. Orange and Orange Fanta, who is not a soda, but it is this Mochino Retic right here. So, um, of course, if y'all didn't see the last video we did, it was quite a little while ago. Um, but we're just here to kind of update, show off, uh, you know, his collection, what his breeding projects currently are. He's got some really cool stuff in the works. We got a Huckleberry. little water monster down here to feature as well. So we'll uh, we'll go through everything, take a look at the fun projects that are going on, play with some cool animals, uh, some really awesome big snakes. Obviously, the retakes are big, and then uh, yeah, see what happens. You know, fat boy. Fat I'm just standing here. Damn, we don't gotta be rude. No. So here we can see this wonderful high tech machinery here of a, a lovely two by four kickstand. But uh, oh no, man, the humor's going in. So yeah, so here we got uh, we got one of his new boys, Huckleberry. Uh, finally got into the lizard game here a, a little while ago. And uh, yeah, tell us uh, a little about so obviously the water monitor. Yeah, so we've had Huckleberry now for. Uh, right at about a year, he's been steadily putting on size with us here. He's become, uh, honestly, one of, one of the poster children uh, of the LLC. Uh, pretty much everyone that comes over loves to play with him, loves to interact with him. He's better behaved than my dog outside. Well, inside, rather. That puppy's a sweetheart. But he's a wonderful animal. He, he loves eating, he loves pooping, and I'll be honest, this is probably the most clever animal I have ever had. You really have to be careful because he will find his way into things, and he can. That's a water monitor for you. Yeah, he can ruin. And also, full disclosure, yes, I know people are going to be out here and they're going to see, yes, this cage is small. He has a lot of room outside. And it's also only a temporary cage until more space is available. But he has plenty of enrichment time outside of the cage. I know that because I'm a follower of Tim on social media. If you guys are not, do that now and you'd be able to see that as well. So let's just get that out of the way before we get any dumb people saying stupid and, things. And also, he was you, you have to think how quickly these things grow. You got to think four months ago, six months ago, when he was three foot shorter, you wouldn't want him in anything bigger than this. Right. But he's just outgrown it that quickly. He's so, a chunker. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's exciting to get to build him another enclosure, so we'll be doing that here pretty soon. All right, guys, so we've had a total of uh, seven clutches this year. This guy has been the sire of three of them, and it's pretty clear why. This is a very unique, beautiful animal. This is Rusty Shackelford. This is our Sunfire Machino Anthrax purple carrier. He's... Absolute sweetheart. Sir, yeah. we're filming a video. <laughs> He's been an ass. That's what he does. He'll throw a tantrum. But uh, <laughs> Rusty's been an absolute stud. He's fertilized uh, three girls for us. So now we're going to get out the big girls and all except one because she's full of eggs. We'll introduce you guys. Now yeah, this thing's probably going to be uh, producing some pretty sweet looking babies, I would assume, with those types of genetics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm going to show you the females and give you an idea of those genetics. So we are doing the dating game and we're doing female number one, right here. So this is the original girl of No Shoulders. This is the yellow-headed female that everyone fell in love with at the shows and everyone's tried to buy off of me. But this is Daisy Face. This is the purple carrier, uh, Phantom Motley with that bright yellow head. She just uh, laid eggs for us a couple weeks ago. So she's still on the mend. She just had her first meal last week and a very important shed. She's looks like she's about to shed. So that's, that's why she's looking a little dull. She is heavily in blue. So she, she looks that good in blue. Just imagine how good she looks outside of shed. And she hasn't really been held or interacted with in several months, so she's a little punchy, so this interaction does serve a purpose. And how, uh, how big do you think she is? She's about 14 foot? Uh, Daisy Face is about 15, 15 and a half. Um, when she's at her full mass, she's probably about 110, 120. 
It's a big girl. Yeah, she's a big girl. I'm about to show you some very big girls. And this is, uh, this is Pennywise. She is not my snake, but she is the biggest animal in the collection. Probably one of the biggest animals on the Eastern seaboard. She is a, uh, a fairly rare morph that's called a clown. And that's not the anthrax combination that you guys are accustomed to. This is a single gene uh, recessive that is called a clown. She is gargantuan, folks. Uh, yeah, just the size of that head. I mean, just to show y'all, I mean, it's, it's basically the size of my phone. You know, I would put my hand right there, but against an animal I don't know. And with as big as it is, I'm not putting my hand over her head. But yeah, it is, she is a big girl. I mean, you, you all know how big my hands are. She, she's a big one. And yes, she does have water in here. Um, it was just taken out just for ease of video. She does have a big water dish again. Don't want to hear any nonsense from anybody. Yeah, she is a, a big old girl. She is a tree trunk of an animal. What do you think her size is? Uh, she's a solid 19, 20 feet. She's, I'd say 20 feet easy. Uh, she's about 180. That's a so she's a, uh, sure. what size pigs are she eating? Uh, we, she'll either have multiple six to eight pound pigs or just go straight to a 15. Jesus. So anybody that is around the Southern part of the United States, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and all that, Feeder pigs. Tim is your man. Hit him up. He will. Uh, he'll give you a good price on uh, some good frozen pigs. They're one of the one of the best, if not the best, feeder option out there for your larger snakes. So definitely hit that's him a, up for your feeder. That's how we pigs. met, isn't it? Feeder pigs. That's how we met. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I can't keep track of stuff, man. I don't I this know. Whole, this whole network of keepers thing. There's quite a few of us. And once you get deep into the network, it's. It's like the dark web. You don't want to go there, really. And look at this big old girl right here. So that is uh, our purple carrier or orange glow. She's the mother of the very first clutch we had this year. She uh, She's about 18 feet, 18 and a half feet. She's the uh, largest female that I personally own. She's not the biggest in the collection, but she's the biggest that I own. Um, she's probably 130, 140 pounds. And what are her genetics? Uh, she is uh, endocaramel. She's a double head. Endocaramel and uh, purple albino. Put them together, you get orange glow. So very similar to our Simon, who is an endocaramel. Um, but you can see, I mean, they look... She looks basically like a giant version of Simon. <laughs> of course, with some other... With her other genetics, with breeding, I'm sure that'll really come out even more when you start mixing those morphs, okay. right? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so very pretty. Girl. She was the first girl to go to uh, Rusty Shackleford, that really cool anthrax machino. So uh, this, uh, she's going to be the first clutch that we cut. So we got exactly ten days before we get to bring those fellas into the world. Pretty excited about that. And if y'all are looking at Retix, can follow him on social media. It's not that far off that he's going to have. Fresh babies, he already, he has babies currently, which we'll look at soon. But yeah, if y'all are in the market for some really cool retics, this is the time to do it. Baby season is coming. Okay, so we, we got the jump on baby season. Every girl in this room cycled this summer. So before it's even, just now getting into fall, we got all those eggs in the incubator. So this is our newest girl. She, she's good. This is a uh, Sunfire Marble. So she will be my final project of the year. Um, she's a good animal. She's she's from a somewhat of a larger collection, so she's not quite as tame as the others, but we are getting there. Let's see if we can get her out. We'll show her off. Has she uh, been paired with any males for this year, or is this going to uh, be for not, next season? Not yet. So she will be paired here, likely within the next four or five weeks. Uh, she is... Right now, I'm just trying to get all that good mass on her so that she will cycle. Who are you thinking of uh, pairing her with? Uh, she's going to be going to a different male. I'm going to show you guys here in a moment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going for some uh, Citron Sunfire. 
albino combination. So she is heterozygous for white albino. I'm just to show you size comparison. That's why I'm she's not caressing with my hand. Yeah, she's not very big. She's only... I mean, she's, she's still in a small snake, but... No. Can retick comparatively. Or that's not the right word. You know what I'm trying to say. For uh, a retick, she's not a very big snake. But for the average person, she's definitely a, definitely a good size snake. So just to show how, a, you know, anybody that's got reptiles, there's always going to be poop. So, yep, you see moved around and looky there. So you will learn to spot clean every single day. So, yeah, no one's got perfectly clean cages. If you see someone and all of their cages are sterile and perfect, that is a damn lie. Yeah, they don't have a job. Yeah. It's, you, you don't want your animals living in filth, but if there's something that happens in the cage and, you know, it takes a day or two before you get it cleaned up, it's not the end of the world, especially if they're in a good sized cage. What's well, cool with these bigger ones, uh, well, the bigger enclosures rather, is you can't just spot clean. So the mulch that we use, you know, if, obviously if we see a mess, we just try to get to it within a day or so. But for the most part, you can just spot clean, you know, once every couple of weeks, do your normal bleach down, wipe everything down. But these enclosures are so big that they can poop in it a couple of times and never even have contact with the stuff. So it makes it easy. Especially to just going to comment on the mulch thing. Mulch is relatively absorbent. So when they do go to the bathroom, all of the, the fun stuff that comes out isn't going to just spread across the entire cage. It's generally going to be localized to Correct. a smaller spot because it gets absorbed and it's not just free flowing. Like kitty litter. Exactly. Well, essentially, yeah. But So this is, uh, this is the male that's going to be paired with her? Yes. So let me get my hand sanitizer real quick. So these guys just came in. So everything in these smaller four foot enclosures uh, are essentially quarantined. Uh, you, you always want to play it safe, you know, for at least for at least three to four weeks when you first bring an animal in. Um, I got these guys in a separate part of the room, uh, in completely bleached out enclosures. Uh, I don't anticipate any issues. These are. This will only be the third time I've actually interacted with these guys. Come here. And I know y'all see him using snake hooks with every single one of these animals. That is called safe handling with animals that can hurt you. Even snakes that are, you know, are just giant puppy dogs. Y using a snake and being a, a hook and being smart when you're handling a large animal that is the responsible way of doing thing, uh, doing things, not like uh, how some of the other YouTubers out there you might see. Um, so yeah, always use Correct. your proper safety protocols, no matter how well you think you know your snake, because things can happen like that, especially with you know an animal like a retic with such a that's so quick. Yeah. So every reptile, it doesn't matter if it's a retic. I just I got bit by a ball python uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and I actually got bit pretty. Bit pretty bad, but all of these animals are susceptible to a food response at any minute. So as beautiful and as socialized and tame as they may be, they are subject to a food response at any minute. So it's always good to keep the hook handy. Now the only one that I'll handle with just 100% confidence is Daisy Face. That's because I've raised her, but this guy, like I said, we've had him for a couple of weeks. And he's not showing any signs of being oh, no, aggressive or this defensive is, or anything like that. This is so. this is great behavior. He's not squeezing yeah. too hard. He's active. He's curious. His tongue's yeah. flicking. Yeah, you can tell he's not tense or ready to strike mm -hmm. or anything like that. But so. this but this is the newest gene of no shoulder. So this is obviously we, we already have a very well founded presence for of Machino. Here in the collection but this is titanium titanium is somewhat like golden child so it it's a recessive gene that in its head form makes a genetic called citron citron is a uh, it's just a color enhancer is the best way i can put it there's not really too many examples of citron because no one's really working with this gene so when i had the opportunity to get not just this guy, but his sister as well. I jumped <laughs> all over it. Get in there. 
if you don't currently own retics, that's something that uh, you can always expect when trying to put them back in. They always like oh, yeah. uh, going for an adventure and climbing. Hey. Simon, our our big re bigger retic, he does the exact same thing. He is just all over the place. Thanks. But that's what makes them fun. They're active snakes. They're not ball pythons that just sit in your lap. They're actually interactive, which a lot of people enjoy. So this is his sister. And if we're being honest, one of the most beautiful snakes I've ever seen. So these guys are the uh, genetic twins, but you're gonna see just the- The uh, yellows on her are a lot more bold. Yes, yes, and the, uh, ex just the overall pattern expression and color saturation between the two animals. So again, these are siblings, same clutch, came into this world the same day. So it's crazy just to show even with the exact same genetics, the different variances that you can yes. have. They're not created equal, essentially. You never know exactly how they're going to, you know, what percentage of what gene they're truly going to be showing. So this is the most direct contact I've had with either one of these animals since I brought them home. So we actually brought them home Monday. And again... You're, you're seeing the very first interaction. It's just all about being able to read their language. Everything that we're seeing here is positive. She's just checking out her surroundings. She's not afraid. That's nice. She, she wants to know, like, who's this big grizzly bear you got in the snake room? Oh, don't worry. Me. <laughs> That's just Gary. Nice. So, uh, she's gonna be staying with us for a good long time. There's honestly a possibility we'll be keeping her for life because there's so much that's there's so much to be done with this genetic and Just no one's working with it and also that positive interaction. We just had I think I just fell in love to be honest with you <laughs> You got that was that was impressive. No, I mean that was a great reaction. But that's a very good animal That's also something to show with retakes. They are a very intelligent animal. They're you know, they, they can sense They can sense things they can pick up on different cues yes. and it when you treat them with respect and you treat them with the proper You know in the proper way with the proper mannerisms, you know, even with a, a testy animal, you know, you're more likely to have Success and that's very similar when I talk about taming with the cyclora how again you want to approach things the right way You want to build threads of trust and keep every single interaction positive It's, it's a perfect example of why how that can you know pretty much any reptile you you follow those steps and that's how to tame yeah, so them. That was I mean realistically could you ask for a better first? interaction? <laughs> Big gravid girl that will be laying uh, most likely either tonight through Monday. So this is the one enclosure that we cannot clean and you intentionally cannot clean it. You do not want to disturb her. You don't want to handle her. You don't want to do anything to cause her stress. The good thing is the cage, I mean, it's some little, little bit of shed skin in it and whatnot, but other than that, it's actually yeah, so, good. She's not living in filth, so correct. it's a so good thing. The, the best part is when they begin to go grab it, they don't defecate, they don't pass urates. Their, their body retains every bit of nutrients that it can and obviously puts it into the ovum, the eggs that are developing. So whenever you get that pre-lay shed, uh, she'll just explode all the skin. You try to get as much of it off out of there as you can before she actually goes gravid. But she is, you can see the scale separation here. Oh yeah, she's thick. I mean, I wish you guys could get a better idea of just how big she is, but We'll get Garrett to stop by sometime this week when she lays her eggs, but she's going to pass, I'm hoping 35 to 40 eggs. And she was paired with? Uh, she was paired with the Sunfire Machino Anthrax up here. Okay, so she was one, one of Correct. Boy, Correct. the Correct, so he, so with him being het purple and her being uh, het white, het caramel, one of two things is going to happen. We're going to have um, Sunfire Marble Granite Backs and we're also going to have lavender or white um, sunfire. Those would be really cool. Yeah. I'm a sucker for the lavender stuff. Sorry, so I'm that's... sitting here trying to describe everything that's going on, but I'm also, I have five other clutches in the back of my mind as well. So I'm just truly all over the place. Sorry, right, he's a Braves fan. He's not that smart. It says a Marlins guy. I couldn't even. Oh, don't get that started. <laughs> Go fish. 
You're welcome for Solaire, by the way. Yeah, one more down here in the QT area. So she is going to be getting uh, paired here in the next couple of weeks as well. Another reason why she's kind of isolated. This is my uh, Jaguar Het Annery. Uh, she does have a touch of the neurological issue known as the wobbles that you get with a Jaguar. Um, but honestly, she's not all that bad. Nothing that would be too concerned. Well, nothing that would cause concern enough to not want to breed her. Uh, very good animal. Eats like a horse. And cannot wait to get her back in a six-foot enclosure. <laughs> we'll leave that out. Well, that's a good example of how at any time, no matter how good of a snake they are, you can get a response like that. Yeah, that's just feeding response. Yeah, that's so, just a feed response, of course. That was not an aggressive strike by any means. But again, it's just the example of why using the proper safety protocols is important with every single animal. And she decided to remove her light, so we'll have to fix that too. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, all the fun breeding projects going on. So I guess now it's time to look at some of the, uh, you know, the fruits of the labor, some of the babies that have hatched here in the past and that are currently, you know, Available, you know, if y'all are in the market. Well, we have one more up here, but we're gonna leave her be for the time being. So she's just a classic golden child. Uh, it had orange ghost stripes. So she has produced some cows. And actually, I can show you. Kind of hard to see with the glare, but y'all get the idea. Let me show her boyfriend. Anary from the tiger. I forgot about that. Uh, Hello. Back your ass up. Step up there and get in. So he's cool. This is a green snake. Back it up. So what he did right there, just tapped it on the head to basically break feed mode. Essentially, you've seen me do it. That's not hurting it in any stretch. It's just letting it know, hey, not food time. Okay, so everything in here is going to be getting clean this weekend, so I realize not everything's spotless, but this ain't all that bad. Oh, hello, snake. All right, so this... Damn it, Rocky. <laughs> all right, guys, so this is my uh, Annery Kalatoa. All right, guys, so this is my Annery Kalatoa Phantom Tiger. So this is Rocky Balboa. Called him Rocky Balboa because when he first began to pair, his girlfriend really kicked his butt and he still went back in there later that day and still got some. So Anery is a very cool genetic. It's essentially a yellow and red pigment color delete. And it leaves you with these green silver snakes. They're, they're just so cool. Now the Kalatoa, if I remember from last time we were here, that's one of the dwarf species, correct? Correct. Well, it's a locality. So it's all the same species. Well, uh, right. Kalatoa is a location, is a very small island similar to Jampea, Carampa, and as a result, being such a small, isolated... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, it's working me, guys. Being such a small, isolated selection of animals, they never had the means or the food supply to really grow to be 20 feet long, 18 feet long. So as a result, they all became significantly smaller through thousands of years of evolution, millions of years of evolution. This is another really good boy. I don't, I don't keep many males, but I have two or three that'll be here for life, him being one of them. He's a very good boy. So what I like about the Kalatoas <laughs> If you look at his eyes, like he, so they have like this bulldog head because they're bat eaters. They eat bats in caves. His eyes are really far, far forward on his head. Trying to get there, but he don't want to stop moving. So we're going to take your word. Go on Google, people. Yeah. But he, he's a good boy. So I did mention babies a second ago, and then we went on a tangent going at other things because that's what we do on this channel. We go on tangents. So now we are actually coming into the babies. Yes, so uh, I did not actually produce any of these animals. A very good friend of mine, and actually a mainstay in the hobby, did. Um, 
Gentleman Tommy Williams with uh, Murder Worms Reticulated Pythons Supply. Um, put these together. These are um, Sunfire Marble Philippine Tribal Combinations. So um, Tommy's uh, going through a little bit of a health issue at the moment. So we took in uh, all of the hatchlings from this recent clutch, just keeping them fed and taking care of them. I mentioned in the video before that the big clown girl, that giant, belonged to a friend. That is the friend that owns her. But these are some beautiful, one of a kind <laughs> marbles that. Typical baby retics that are special. Yeah, they're just flighty. <laughs> but these are some of the most beautiful marbles ever produced. I come in here in the morning. So every morning before work, I, I do come in here at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning and just visit with the animals, make sure everyone's clean, do what needs to be done. And then I go to work. And one of my favorite things to do is to spend time with the babies. Obviously keeping, having them socialize is a good thing. Yeah, you can see, I mean, retakes typically when they're babies at this size, they're, they're normally very defensive and hissy and bitey. Those are two in a row now that come out and they're absolutely perfect. So that just goes to show you buy a baby retic here from Tim at No Shoulders. I mean, you're getting a socialized animal that's oh, yeah. taken care of. You're not getting one that's just coming out firing like, again, some of the other so, uh, YouTubers. We're going to intentionally not handle this guy, but he uh, he just had a meal. But this is just a Philippine Sunfire. <laughs> Tough guy. See, he's one that's still a little bit of a jerk. And granted, he probably didn't appreciate the camera being right in well, his face, he's... but... So this one is a, so I mentioned tribal. So this is the tribal genetic. So this is Sunfire Marble, a Philippine locality, tribal. So tribal is a genetic that just completely cleans up the sides of the animal. Think of it as a somewhat of a super Sunfire, but leaving its own little touch. Like it's, very very neat genetic that's pretty young oh yeah so the gentleman i mentioned tommy put a lot of work and a lot of effort into his locality and marble projects i'm about to show you some of some one of the kind animals that he's made all right done with you go back to your room <laughs> so here is So this is, okay, you're going to stop. You're going to stop. You're not going to be a tough guy. Just because you're on camera, you're going to behave. All right, so this is Sunfire Philippine Marble. So I have a total of three of these in the collection at the moment. So that is a total of three marbles that you cannot get elsewhere. These are just beautiful. I haven't yet to find anyone that has produced an animal, a marble animal as beautiful as these. All credit to Tommy. These are just breathtaking. Huckleberry. So he's throwing a tantrum. He wants to, he doesn't understand why we're in his room and not giving him attention. <laughs> So these are <laughs> a cranky butt. No, calm down. So everyone is aware of the ocelot genetic. <clears throat> That's the new latest and greatest thing with reticulated pythons, well, along with blue hypo. But these are Motley 100% het ocelot, Poshet purple albino 
clown. So what you saw in Pennywise, that really, really big girl, that's the recessive gene I was telling you guys about. <laughs> But the biggest thing, well, you've known this about me since we met, but I spend a lot of time with babies. So this is mm -hmm. this is a daily thing. So it's not very often you can find someone that could just reach into a tub like that and not get nipped. But, I mean, it's all about time spent. And that's just what makes the difference of getting a, you know, a quality animal. You know, obviously it's going to cost a little bit more than, let's say, if you just go to... You know, some Joe Blow breeder that's just pumping them all out, but you're paying for the time and effort that actually goes into raising them the proper way. Correct. We make pets. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Y'all have seen Diego do spider lizards, so apparently he wants to uh, play that game too. Huckleberry, what are you doing, fat boy? Can you get down? Can you get down? Oh, let's show you the eggs. Cool. Let's go check out uh, the eggs about to go. And uh, I know this has been a long one, but obviously a lot of really great stuff that we're looking at. So let's go check out the eggs and then we'll wrap it up. Cool. All right, guys. So this is the first of two incubators that uh, we have here at No Shoulders. Uh, everything that I use, I've, I've built. So I have a total of about 85 eggs in this one incubator. I have everything from uh, Kalatoa Anary Cows to the... Uh, Orange Glow, Anthrax, Sunfire combinations to um, Big Girl Daisy Face just laid a clutch uh, a couple weeks ago. So I got a few of her eggs in here as well. And a big marble. I'm expecting her to lay over 40 plus. So she gets this entire incubator to herself. So it's going to be a lot of eggs. It's going to be a lot of damn snakes. Ugh. So, yeah, like I said, if y'all want retakes, you got to follow them on social media so you can see as they hatch, as they become available, as they have their first meal, the first shed, all that sort of fun stuff, and get yourselves a really cool pet. Yeah, and this one, so every time you buy a snake from me, you get to babysit this thing for a week. She's going to come over to your house and eat your groceries. Dog hair is included with every purchase. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Alrighty, also, thanks again for sticking with the long video here as Tim shows off the millions of things that he has going on here. And, uh, you know, go follow him on social media.